The Kremlin is using propaganda to acclimate Russians to a new reality and new normality in response to the Ukrainian Armed Forces operation in the Kursk region. Medusa reported the information citing its own sources. According to the outlet's sources, immediately after the start of the Ukrainian Armed Forces operation in the Kursk region, the Russian elites were shocked. But in two weeks, the shock passed and they got used to it. According to a source close to the Kremlin, at first it was unclear what forces were involved and how long it would last. Now we understand. It's easier. According to a survey by the Public Opinion Foundation, anxiety among Russians has increased by 6% and reached 45%. The Putin administration considers these figures to be quite high and hopes for a rapid decline. In times of shock, and this was definitely a shock, there are always jumps in sociological indicators, then people get used to it and everything settles down. What happened during Prigozhin's mutiny, mobilization, and at the beginning of the war? But everything calmed down, the source said. However, the officials interviewed by the Medusa Internet newspaper are sure that the fighting in the Kursk region may continue for several months. During this time, it is not excluded that Ukraine will seize more territory. Therefore, in order to quickly calm the mood of citizens, the Kremlin is trying to prepare them for life in a new reality and new normality. These terms have already been used by propagandists during the pandemic and at the very beginning of the war with Ukraine. According to the Kremlin's portrayal of this new reality, the following elements are emphasized. The enemy has indeed breached Russian territory. They will ultimately be defeated. However, the reclamation of these territories will require time and Russians should be patient. At this time, people are encouraged to channel negativity and shock into positive direction. In particular, to participate in collecting aid for the Kursk region. Putin's administration has already recommended doing so. The wife of a mobilized Russian complains that he disappeared after being sent to the Kursk region. She contacted Russian media, stating that her husband was in Kamenka, 18 kilometers from St. Petersburg, refusing to return to the war. The Russian woman told the Astra publication that her husband had previously been wounded, was covered in shrapnel and had difficulty walking, so he decided not to return to the front and wrote a refusal. No one was going to let the occupier refuse Nick go home. Doctors told him directly at the commission that he was category B, but they would put him in A, saying, go fight if you have arms and legs. The soldier acted recklessly, leaving his military unit without permission, for which he was arrested and supposed to go to trial in September. We decided that prison was better than all this. The occupier's wife admitted to the media. The Russian army command did not like the adventurous plans of the soldier who refused military service. He, along with 150 other soldiers, was sent by plane to the Kursk region. Already at the training ground in the Kursk region, the commanders were more familiar with the situation and the power of the Ukrainian Armed Forces offensive, giving the arriving occupiers the most valuable advice in their lives. If you can run, run, the officers emphasized. 37 occupying soldiers took the advice and fled, wearing bulletproof vests and carrying machine guns, but were caught by military police. The soldier in question was shocked in the neck with a stun gun and another occupier was tied to a pole. Then the objectors were sent to the Shebekinsky district of the Belgorod region, after which he stopped communicating.